Now, you might hear the average Joe speak on a gangster and say he was the best to ever do it, but there's a difference when a federal agent says it about an individual. And that individual we're talking about is Laurelton's finest, Tommy Mickens, one of many street legends out of Queens. Let's get into it. From owning grocery stores to laundry mats to sneaker shops to social clubs, with business names such as Montana Dry Cleaners, Montana Sporting Goods, Montana Groceries, he wanted it to be known. Early on, being a young entrepreneur, he found ways not only to put money in his pocket, but he was able to get his friends paid. So you see, he had the boss mentality since a teenager. He tried to legit wait for a while, but the guys that was in the streets looked like they was having way more fun than him, wearing the flyest gear. He thought to himself, there shouldn't be any reason why he should be wearing hand-me-downs. He dropped out of school and started selling a tree, and it was on from there. A lot of kids' parents were doing all right, just all right, but you know the kids wanted their own money. The money was coming in and he was able to dress as fly as he wanted and others noticed he began to put his friends on everything was going good until he ended up selling to an undercover and ended up serving two months in the game you learn lessons take it on the chin and move on come back even stronger now that wasn't his first time behind bars he had arrest for robberies and grand larceny on his jacket when he returned on the streets after that little light bed he saw new faces and began to bump heads with other hustlers a year later he was hit up but refused to give the cops any info on the people that did it you had the Jamaicans that would try to move in on this turf, but you know, he would handle that. Now, of course, there's levels to the game. He was ready to turn that Honda money into Ferrari money. He decided to take it up a notch selling weight at the age of 17. And luckily, he was always able to get some gain from his father, which was a numbers runner early on. He would tell him to always keep his main circle tight and never where you eat. Now, what helped Mickens is that he received two separate inheritances from his father when he turned 18 to 21. Early on, he decided to run around and he seen a lot of things that he wanted. He saw money, he saw the cars, and of course, he saw the young fly ladies. Early on, he began to date Peppa before she was a part of Salt and Peppa, of course. He was a young dope boy and she liked street dudes that was already pushing machines around the city and kept her lace. Shortly after, he would be busted for selling to an undercover and took a plea deal. He kept his mouth shut. He did a year behind bars. Now, when he got out, he was only 20, and the movie Scarface hit the big screen. He loved every minute of it, a story about rags to riches. That scene when the blimp went past and it said the world is yours was motivation, and that was the only motivation he needed. He started calling himself Montana after the movie, and before you knew it, he was making thousands on Merrick Road, with a 50-man crew split from corner to corner. 24-7 operation was so Soul train lines coming from around the corner. It went from thousands of dollars a month, then it went to tens of thousands, to hundreds of thousands, to a million dollar organization. It's easy to say get your money and get out the game when you never had a strip jumping, like literally had fiends pop locking. It's hard to stop doing anything when you're doing it at a different level. Now, the way he moved and operated was to always be presentable. You don't get a second chance to make a good first impression. He had his business cards with the slogan, Tommy Anytime, with his phone number on them. He was the businessman first. Even the headbusters knew that they didn't have to approach him with any tension. He carried himself like a gentleman. The gunplay was last resort. His thing was, if you couldn't sit down and talk about it like bosses first, you was never a boss to begin with. Back then, they used to bet heavy on basketball games, and he had his little team going on. And I heard a story about him and Alpo decided to pit 10 Gs on a basketball game. Tommy ended up leaving without paying because he didn't think the win was honorable, but Alpo ended up getting his money eventually. Now, if you heard the story, clear it up in the comments for me. And if I miss anything, don't be scared to add. Now, the way he moved at such a young age was slick. He wanted to purchase a crib, but only had street money. He moved $20,000 into his girlfriend's parents' bank account and got them to write a gift to a happy couple check. He deposited $12,000 into his girlfriend's account, and she converted that into a check for a down payment on the crib. He had many ways to do it. He would pay people to let him use their bank accounts to convert cash into checks, get friends to purchase his vehicles for him, using old-fashioned checks, money orders. And if he sent them in there with cash, he made sure it was no more than 10K at a time in order to evade the federal cash transaction reports requirements. He was very good at hiding his ownership, barely putting anything in his name. So that 38-foot yacht that he docked in Cali, the helicopters and the properties had to be registered under someone else's that he trusted and he knew that was very responsible. I mean, how this country 
Mercedes ran, is it really necessary to put things of value in your name when it could easily be stripped from you by the government, baby moms, divorces, even getting sued for something dumb? I'm just saying. But he had a $760,000 mansion he bought in Dix Hills that had a landing strip. 17 other properties between New York, Florida, and Cali. He didn't do the gold teeth for the grills. He had dimes installed in his teeth. He made sure he kept a Kool-Aid smile for the haters. Now, Mickens' assets started to spark interest of one of the U.S. Internal Revenue Special Agents, not only in New York, but in California. Now, he once was stopped by a New Jersey state trooper with $15,000 in cash inside the latest Mercedes-Benz at the time. He gave them the name Tommy Harris, but, you know, later they would end up getting his real identity. The Benz was registered under a woman from Atlantic City. Now, one day, a man would call law enforcement, willing to help give them information on Mickens. The caller was tired of his wife stepping out on him with Mickens, and was tired of Mickens visiting their home. Messing with a man's wife could be very dangerous, and he knew he couldn't beat Mickens on the streets, so he decided to take another route. In 1988, Mickens was indicted and charged with tax invasion, money laundering, conspiracy to distribute cocaine, and distributing cocaine. During the investigation, they was able to get him to directly sell to an undercover, not once but twice. So his trial consists of prosecutors convincing the jury that whatever this man claims to do for a living doesn't match the lifestyle and the purchases this man made over the years. Of course, he could say he have a business, but that's when they say, oh yeah, he used them as a front to launder money. A car salesman testified that Mickens gave him a grocery bag with over $32,000 for a payment towards his Ferrari. Another salesman testified that his thumbs turned black from counting all the small bills Mickens gave him. So the amount of cash payments didn't help, especially one of the wheels that had the VHS player in it. <laughs> so around the time, if you had a store and Mickens came in and made an expensive purchase, you would be called in to take the stand and the prosecutors would question you about the price tag on the purchase and how was it paid. June 28, 1989, he was sentenced to 35 years in prison and hit with a million dollar fine for 16 counts of conspiracy, money laundering, and tax invasion. They also seized $2.5 million in assets. So that's when the government get their cut on top of that fine. In 2008, he was released from prison and started his first non-Montana business called the Tommy Experience. Now, 35 years is a whole lot of time for a non-violent crime, but you know they could do what they want. Now, for all the youngest that's watching these gangsters and rappers, of course, we all want to ball, and we all know the 9 to 5 ain't going to cut it, but you don't have to ball every day. Stack your money so you can take vacations every year. Ball on vacation. Ball on your birthday. Stop wasting your money going to the local clubs and bars. You could go to a different city, like every once in a while and have a good time don't cheat yourself but anyway that's all man that's all we got tonight people be on the lookout for the upcoming videos i got some fire dropping soon hit the playlist because i i highly doubt that y'all saw all my videos <laughs> get the likes up and show love in the comments subscribe if you're new y'all stay focused stay out the way keep grinding i'm out